Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like trouble. He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Sebring, the 1964 series here from the Virtual World Supercars. I am James Parfit. I'm going to be joined in the booth by Mr. Edward Hunter. And then on production in the background, we have got the wonderful Paul Glover, as always. Thank you so much to everybody that's joined me. Phil, welcome in. Are you there, dear sir? I can see you. Thank you very much for that one as well. It's going to be an absolutely amazing event. If you did not see these last time out, I have to say you have missed out. It has been absolutely epic. We watched some great racing in the very first race of this series. It was absolutely incredible. I loved it. Paul loved it. I think we had Brad who was there as well, and he loved it all at the same time. But let's bring you up the current track situation here at Sebring as well, as we can have a look at the track map here once more as we wait for that to pop up on to the screen there it is a location florida in the usa 8.36 kilometers 5.91 miles and we're on the 1952 to 1966 layout there as well and as you can see what is normally down into sunset bend you have got u-turn as you go on the run through first second and up through the s's there as well so new layout going to be absolutely amazing straight run down from tower corner down into Le Mans which is 13 and 14 there there's normally obviously we've got bishops in the middle of that but that's all not on this layout as well so it's going to be absolutely incredible right on to the challenges for today let's have a look um, unfamiliar layout. Well, we know that because it's not going to be the same layout as the most of the modern day drivers are here as well. High temperatures, of course, and Florida weather, which means there's going to be a tornado whisking across Sebring, antically taking the drivers with them as well. So pay, stay tuned for that one. Let's have a look at the scores on the doors as we're going into round two. And currently Magnus Dolgren in the Div 3 is out in front on 14.4 points there after the win last time out. Ross Smith in second and uh, JT Tammy in third. Bradley Sellers in fourth with Timo Suvic in fifth. And then on from that, we've got Carl Vessa, Ethan Funk, Mike Bell, Jason Whitehead, Nicholas Hildebrand, Miguel Ramos and Nicholas Kirstens. Then we've got ME Racing Ferrari 250 out in front in the teams. And then rookie monsters Shelby Daytona with Ross Smith in second. Smile Power Racing third with Storm Rider Racing in fourth and then Scudi Auto BWOT Ferrari in fifth so that is the Div Freeze there as well moving on the Div Free Ams Jerry Chen is out in front on 14.4 with George Angelidis in second Barry DeMarzo in third with Yas uh, Yaroslav Zadchek in fourth John Meyer in fifth and Peter Meyer Mayer in fifth Meyer in sixth then in the teams it's Flying Kiwi Racing 250 Scudieri Cavelli in second with Hartel Racing in third so that is the current Div freeze in the div one and twos is Elko Businic out in front on 14 and a half with Daniel Herlock in second Dan Kirby down in third he's not here tonight he's hurt his ankle bless get well soon Dan Darren Andrews in fourth with David Yun in fifth Alexi Zagar uh, Zagar nope hold on 
Zagorodnev in sixth with Tigran Mikatiran in seventh, Reese Gardner eighth, and then Oliver Newman in ninth with Sir Pope in tenth. In the teams, it's Joy Motorsport Porsche in the 904s with Mike Bell Motorsport in second, CMS Pro Alfa Romeo in third, Alpha Australius Helvecticus in fourth, Cyberlinks in fifth, and then Associate Automobiles Alpine in sixth, Gasolinks Racing in seventh, Reptile Racing in eighth, and then Front Go Monsters in ninth. Moving on in the Div 1 and 2 arms, it's Oliver Day out in front on 14.4 with Diego Castro in second, Eric Monet in third, James Bowders in fourth, Luke Goodlife in fifth, Mateus Bogle in sixth, Alfredo Cabrera in seventh, Fernando Ferreira in eighth, Adam Gray in ninth, Stephen Miller in tenth, Felipe Ducardi in eleventh. There, moving into the teams, it's Mistral 747 out in front, Reptile Racing Porsche in second, Mistral Targa Porsche in third, and then Gasso Links Port Race. Porsche in fourth. Moving into the calendar. So this is the current calendar that we are running with here as well. We said we are at round two. Now as the calendar comes up on your screen, there we go. We're off to Targa Florio on round three. That will be on the 30th of March before we go to the wonderful Spa Francochamps. I am so looking forward to that all day. I'm hoping that's hay bales down the left-hand side. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Le Mans, that's definitely going to be hay bales down the left-hand side from this era. Then we go to Reims on the 6th of July. Copper Karoti Cor Hill Climb in on the 27th. Then the Copper Diana on the 10th of August. Goodwood on the 17th of August. Nürburgring on the 5th. And Monza on the 26th there. Bridgehampton on the 16th of November. Province Alpine Hill Climb on the 30th. And then we finish off in Paris on the 7th of December. It's a full year's calendar here as well. So stay tuned and get yourselves buckled in for that one. You're going to not want to miss any of that action here as well. We can have a quick chat with Ed up in the booth. Ed, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Oh, very good. Thanks, James. Uh, really enjoyed watching uh, all the racing and the action at Daytona. It just looks so close in uh, all uh, four of our classes, of course, the, the AM classes uh, for Division 1 and 2 and uh, the Pro classes, of course, for all of them as well. So, uh, I, I'm just really excited to see the old Sebring as well, because uh, like you say, it's not one we're used to. So it, it's very, very old school, and you've got to love the attention to detail, not just on the track details that they've all made themselves, but also in terms of the uh, smart BOP that I think George was telling me about uh, before the broadcast started, that it feels like it's all been very, very well thought out, and it leads to just a really good formula that produces uh, exciting racing. And uh, it's, it's going to be really, really interesting to see who's got the, the package to win in terms of the uh, mm. fuel strategy, especially. Absolutely. Tires on the board. You can see there we've got Div 3 on street tires. Div 1 and 2 also on street tires. There is no special tire compounds here as well. It's basically almost like a run what you brung kind of scenario. As you, they, there are no special limits there as well. I can see we have been joined once more by my confidant, the man who gives me absolutely no information on what's going on the following season at all. Mr. Ross Smith. Ross, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Great, thank you for having me, James. Uh, good to see you, Ed. Of course, Paul. Yeah, doing his thing. Paul's there doing his bit, and he, can, you know, he's directing our wonderful cameras. So, what's the score? What's the situation on the at the moment here, Ross, as well for this week with the mod? What's been the improvement since the last, since the first round, of course? Uh, so a lot of focus has been on uh, doing uh, just kind of BOP analysis. Uh, Daytona is only one track. It's very specially unique, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it makes it challenging to come up with, uh, with numbers that move more engines. But uh, obviously we're, we're doing a lot, um, taking notes, and there's a lot still to be done with uh, different graphical things that we need to have updated. So uh, we feel like we're in a pretty good spot. We'll see how today's race goes. Um, obviously, with the uh, Ep in the Div 3, I've, I've got a little more experience up there seeing how the fuel situation is. The, the Corvette just goes on for uh, just you know light years without having to refuel. And then poor Shelby here is just, I, I feel like it, uh, it sweats it all out or something because it's, yeah, it's going to be a fuel race by the end. And uh, you'll see separation within the, the cars, within the models. Yeah, it's going to be wild coming towards the end. All right, what are we expecting out of fuel? What do we, what do we think the situation is going to be? Uh, so Tuesday at MNRL, the sister series, it's uh, regional U.S., it's, uh, it ran out to uh, be about a one-stopper for uh, 
the Ferraris and the Corvettes, and uh, it was a two-stopper for a splash and dash for the Shelbys. But we also had a bunch of rain, so that really kind of mixed things up. So uh, Ferraris might need a splash at the end. Um, the C2 should still be able to go uh, on on just one, but it does start to lose pace as it goes on. It uses its tires up. So yeah, it'll uh, it'll be fun to watch for sure. But uh, and then I can tell you that the the Lotus also suffers kind of uh, similarly to the um, to the Shelby in terms of just consuming mass quantities of fuel. It seems uh, and having a tiny tank. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's going to be an, a, a wild ride. Uh, you're going to see the uh, the Div 1s and 2s definitely get more uh, in touch with themselves uh, in terms of how they can move around Daytona. I mean, you're running flat out for a long period of time here. You do have those big, long straights where cars can stretch their legs, but there's quite a bit more in the twisty bits. And uh, yeah, and the twisty bits, I, I do want to point out um, Don Fryman of Storm Gang Simulation and, and uh, Ben Borman as well. Both of them did a wonderful job of taking uh, Tyrone's 1966 Sebring uh, from a Soto Corsa and bringing it in. There's still a lot um, that I know Ben wants to focus in on some of the visuals, but man, they have they have just worked their absolute butts off to get this thing ready. And mm. uh, I mean, it's great. Uh, um, what so. do what do we think though? Um, Sebring itself, right? We're we're at a classic layout. We're we're skipping out of Bishop. We're not going really though into Le Mans through fifteen like we normally would. Of course, we've got the U turn at the end. We haven't got the sunset bend. What's the situation out there with the track? Is it is it still driving of the Sebring of old? Is it still very bumpy? Do you feel like you need to get new dentures by the time you come <laughs> off it? No, fortunately, uh, you know the earth has not upheavaled itself. Uh, as it has in the modern one, it's still kind of bumpy. Um, I'd say you get more undulations than just straight up jackhammering, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely has a lot of character. But uh, yeah, it, it it's it's a beautiful course. Uh, definitely not as lit up as uh, the more modern one. You're going to see that off in the darkness. But man, it is so good. Uh, you're going to see long braking zones. People forgetting where they are. Uh, the weather's kind of moved off. We had a little bit of sprinkles here early on, which made it really cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's Florida. You never know when the little sprinkling will come back through and scare some people. Could be, Are we uh, expecting rain? Is that what you're telling us? I think we've seen all of it for right now. But, uh, like I said, it's Florida. You just never know. Um, there could just be a little pop-up shower here or there. I don't think it's going to really do anything other than startle some folks. Where does that leave you on higher stri strategies if it does rain? Uh, you, well, you haven't got wets as such, have you? There's, you drive slower. <laughs> That's all you do. <laughs> there's nothing else to be done. You just gotta hope for the best and uh, and just make sure that you're backing up your braking zones. That's that's all you can do. It really is a, a driver's car with all of these cars the way that they were back in the sixties. Well, that is going to be absolutely incredible. What's your chances, Ross? Where, where are you at in in this race? Are we going to see Ross Smith up the front again? Um, I might spend some time up there in the middle of the race, but I think uh, I think we're too hindered by fuel. Um, I mean, we're gonna we have a couple strategies we're gonna try and play out, and we're just gonna hope things go our way, and uh, we just take full advantage, make no mistakes. If we can do that, then who knows? We we're at least aiming for a top five. We're uh, we qualified well. Um, I got my teammate Angus. Uh, he's a little bit further down the order. Um, I know he's he's not feeling quite as strong, um, but you know we're we're in a good spot. I think we'll. Uh, come away here in this position. Uh, okay, well, let's hope for here as well. Going forward, right, we've talked about what's going, on, what's going on with the mod and what you've done. Going forward with the mod, what is the plan for this mod, right? Because we already know you're planning next season and we already know you're not going to give me any information, so I'm not going to ask. But what, where, how far do you take it? It's like an F1 car, right? You, you, you take it so far into the season as under development and then you go, no, nah, I'm not doing any more of that. We need to concentrate on next year's car. How far do you take the mod into development before you turn around and say, right, George, we're not touching it now. I need to get next season's ready. Um, well, I mean, we're, we work on it constantly. I mean, I actually just did an update for our historic Trans Am, the Golden Age, uh, where we've, we had to go and do some tweaking on some of the windshield. So it's it's fairly ongoing. I mean, right now we do have a good list of things we want to address. Um, I mean, it's I would say it's an extremely strong beta position. I mean, if this went into the workshop right now, I'd feel okay with that. Um, there are certain things that 
we're going to uh, take a look at some details. Uh, there are some graphical things that need to be updated. But uh, other than that, I mean, this is probably in one of the best positions we've had a mod at release. Uh, we obviously use Champion Motorsports as sort of a, uh, a lab uh, for testing yeah. uh, while also giving you know, the community a chance to be able to enjoy cars that just otherwise aren't available. And uh, yeah, we've, we've done a lot of work. We've gotten a lot better. Our tools have gotten better. Workflow is great. I mean, we, we're in a really good position. We're already getting the, uh, the cars for next year ready to go, which I can tell you there will be five and uh they are going to be of the same class so you're going to or category i should say and you'll have three driver classes pro pro am and am so that's going to be the breakout and the strategy for the races is going to be very different from what you're used to seeing okay okay that's the first tidbit uh, as well might be Pro the last <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I don't know why I get excited, because I don't ever get anything other than that. You, you're, you're very tight-chested, aren't you? You know what I mean? You're, if we, yeah, if, if we stuck a, you know, gave you a lump of, if we gave you a lump of coal, Ross Smith, in a week, you'd have a diamond. You're, that, you're not that tight with it, you know what I mean? Yep. So, the um, Sebring, obviously, we're looking at it at the moment here as well. Hay bales on there as well. Ross, what's the situation? Why would you come out of... <laughs> Never mind, James. Calm down. Um, I've, I've not said of it. Got hay bales. Ross, how many do we think we're going to have left by the end of it? Uh, they definitely get used, much like these cones that are around here. You can already see a few hay bales out and about. And they are, they are hard. When you hit them, they'll do a little bit of damage. Uh, it's not a lot mostly superficial but if you ding them enough yeah i mean it can it can have an impact the thing that will have the most impact though if you check out some of the uh the white tires like around the s's and uh at some of like down at hairpin uh, on some of the back side of the course those are all very real if you roll over those hard enough they will do great damage to your car maybe even send you into the air and uh worse things can happen but uh yeah, it, it, it's all very real. Uh, you definitely are going to see bales and cones moving all over the place. It's going to be pretty exciting. I mean, I, I kind of am a little bit jealous because you guys are going to see a lot of the cars moving around, having a lot of fun. It's uh, it's going to be cool. You know, for me, it's quite interesting as we sit here at the start finish straight, right? I mean, we're staring at it, and that that turn at the end. Obviously, we're so used to a fast-flowing sunset bend. And it looks like we're almost going to be stopping and coming right back on ourselves. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes here for me, I think, just sitting here watching the, the old style Sebring. Obviously, for you out on track, it's going to be a different perspective all together. And I think that going forward is going to be exciting in general. But I think I just have one final question from me, and that is, will we ever see people run into the cars? Uh, well, not running, but I can tell you at Le Mans, we will do a traditional Le Mans start. It'll be a standing start. You uh, you get the green flag, and you go from your starting position. So not exactly a run to your cars kind of thing. Uh, I can tell you that in the past, we've had some drivers, uh, a very select few, that they ran to their car as they heard the uh, countdown buzzer. They ran to their rig, I should say just That's for fun <laughs> yeah that would be cool maybe we can get a couple of get a couple of streams in of people run into their ring <laughs> i'll see <laughs> what i can do for you <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome they've got to start in the kitchen and wherever their rig is they've got to run to it with a camera that would be insane well, i mean through the window <laughs> yeah we'll have a video link in that would give paul an extra little bit of a mission to deal with when he at Le Mans there as well i think that would be quality for us we've got to make that happen I will. Uh, I will talk to the uh, teams and see what's uh, what's available for you. And uh, yeah, That'd be awesome. All right. Well, Mr. Mr. Smith, thank you so much for um, coming to have a chat with us as always, there, buddy. Really great. You know the the great job that you guys have done with the mod itself and 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 i can only praise you because i think the first one at daytona was absolutely insane and i've got a funny feeling this is going to be absolutely epic so ross yeah great job for you and your guys there as well and as and Estella, well done but let's see if can we get another smith up the front well 
Come on, Ross, you can do it. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. Daytona might have been my my only opportunity this year, but uh, you know, I can only try my best. Daytona's not Yeah, you've got to be in it to win it, there, Mister Smith. And if you don't get in it, you've got to try it. So there we go. Bye, Thank buddy. You. Have a good one, Ross, and we'll catch up with you. It's maybe hopefully at the end. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Well, I know you're going to have a great time watching this thing. It's going to be fantastic, and uh, hopefully, see you at the end. Yeah, let's see you later, buddy. Take care. Well, there you go, guys. That was Mr. Ross Smith, part of the Storm Game Simulation team here, of course, that does the mods um, with a lot more other people. The, the SGS team is, is just absolutely incredible in what they've done here as well. It's quite Edward. It's quite interesting, Edward. The fact when he was talking about the track, the fact of how it's going to go out there, you know, we've got the Ferraris, Mr. Reese in YouTube chat, a resident pit lane roving reporter. Ferrari should have no issue doing a one stopper. We think it's going to be a fuel consumption race. I think overall it could be absolutely incredible. It could, yes, because it's one thing saving the fuel, but making sure you're going quick enough to make the strategy work and then making the moves on track when you need to. Especially down the straights, if you've got a more powerful car, that could really be a also an important factor in deciding the result here. As well as just plain staying out of trouble, because there's so many hazards here at this circuit. Like we were talking about those tires, that we can just see on the inside of this particular corner. The hay bales on the outside, and not to mention the other cars. And the yeah. undulation as well, as it's been pointed out, it's going to be a bump, uh, how much... Uh, yeah, some of these cars are going to get at a high speed and through some of these uh, bumps as well. And <laughs> indeed, off the tyres, if they are trying to go to a free oh, wide. Oh, mate, they, they are going to cause problems, aren't they? Let's be real. Them uh, half-cut tyres are just going to... It's just going to be insane. <laughs> so stay uh, tuned, guys. The safety, James. <laughs> yeah, I know. But what more do they need? Real men back then. Not, you know, not what it real is tire. today, is it? Real tyres, real men, aren't they? Real drivers. So that's my philosophy on it anyway. But there we go, guys. We are coming to the end of warm-up. We haven't got long left whatsoever. We'll be able to bring you up the grid um, of who's going to be where very shortly. But I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. I think Mr. Glover is going to have his work cut out in the background here, trying to cope with all of this action that's going to be happening at this multiple-turn circuit. Well... What do we think, Ed? Are we going to get clean or are we going to get chaotic? Uh, I think uh, it's a 16 turn circuit, so multiple could be at any track, to be honest, other than maybe if it's a straight, like, I don't know, Avis or something like that. But yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, certainly when we get the lapped cars and the different classes being lapped, I think that's when things, we, we could start to see a few things starting to get ugly and sketchy here and there. But hopefully people will have learned some of the lessons uh, from Daytona. And you don't go on another blue flag round. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed, mate. Not allowed. Uh, I, I'm going to stay out of that one now. Uh, I'm just going to go with how they're going to go with. That is the qualifying results on your screen. Reese Gardner is out in front in his little Alfa Romeo Julia there with a three minute 12 lap. Blimey. Ben Borman in second with Cameron Baker in third. Becky Ely in that Lotus. I do love that Lotus. It's literally a skateboard on wheels in fourth. Elko Bussin in fifth, Diego Castro in sixth, Alexander Nakara Hosikov in seventh. Apologies, I know I have not said that right. Tony McCovenant in eighth, Daniel Herlock in ninth with Scar Pope down in tenth in the Alpine. So there you go, that is the first page. Just There we go. David Shun in 10th. Alfredo Cabrera in 11th. Declan Grady in 12th. John Uyan down in, I'm sure it goes 12-13, not 12-14, but there we go. 12-14-13 is Craig Pullen. 14 is Matthew Overton. I see an error. Um, Oli, I'm just going to call you that, in 15th. And then Luca down in 16th place. <laughs> Otherwise, that's going to cause me a problem. Then we got the arms of Oliver Day and, and Pavel in second. Fernando Ferreira in third. Santiago Danco in fourth. Adam Gray fifth. Filippo Marazzi in sixth. Stephen Miller in seventh. Eric Monet in eighth. James Bowders ninth. And Felipe Ducati down in tenth on a 3-14. Man, that is some 
That is some running. That is a long lap time there as well. So, um, yeah, that's the result of our qualifying at the moment. Div three, we've got Bradley Sellers out in front. Oh, uh, no, we've got John, John Meyer, then Jerry Chen, Barry DeMarzo, George Angelides, Tom Mountjoy, and Tom Mountjoy for some. Uh, and then in the pros is Bradley Sellers, Ross Smith. Carl Vesser, Ethan Funk, Magnus Dahlgren, JT Tammy, Timon Suvic, Tom Lane, Jason Wyatt, and Alexander Shorts in 10th. So there you go. That is the current positions on the circuit. And let's see how these guys once more do a... Uh, I'm sure they're going to do an absolutely fantastic job once again here. Uh, and something that I think Ed would really look forward to. Yes, absolutely. And uh, just a note on Adam Gray, he's got a penalty that's carried over from Daytona, so he will have to serve that uh, early on in this race. But not, not, not lost, though, for Adam Gray, because as long as he gets out of the way early, then he should be able to make that ground back up. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the things we're going to be paying attention of as well. Bradley Sellers leading the field away with Smith, Vesa, Funk, Dolgren, Tammy, Suvik, Lane, Meyer and Whitehead. Why is Meyer in black? I'm wondering if that's because he's not associated in a class at the moment. I wonder if that could be the problem as I've seen that happen there as well. Bradley Sellers uh, leading us away. Yeah, did three arms. I'm just wondering why he's not in the other colours. Oh, no, they are all black. Okay, so my bad on that one. There's Jerry Chen. <laughs> DeMarzo, Angelina, there's a Mountjoy there as black as well. So you can see the cars currently at the moment doing a stellar job here. You're going to want to stay and watch this. Regardless if you like sim racing, regardless if you like motor racing or any form of racing, this racing you are going to see is going to be absolutely epic and epic is the only word i'm going to be able to use because it is going to be incredible here this evening as well so stay tuned don't go anywhere sit back relax get your popcorn get your drinks and we'll get this race underway very very shortly challenges ed well there's quite a lot isn't there there certainly are. Like we were talking about, uh, it's just uh, memorizing the circuit, especially when it gets dark later on. Uh, you're going to see a couple of people falling back on their muscle memory of the uh, newer version of Sebring, and that could lead to some drama. So uh, everyone's got to make sure that they uh, keep uh, the mistakes as uh, minimal as possible and uh, also keep the foot flat to the floor when you get to the straights, because otherwise you're going to see someone go around the outside of you. Yeah, you, you definitely are. But it, it just looks amazing. Look at them. The cars just looked incredible. Everything just looks epic. And Sebring, in conjunction with what it is now and how it looks now, you can see the airfield status of it back in the day. It is literally, right, there's a track that we've just coned out. We've stuck some half tires there. There's the, uh, there's the track. Off you go, boys. We're not going to give you anything. Yeah, but that was sort of the case post-World War II. Silverstone in the UK is a similar situation where they had this old airfield they weren't mm -hmm. using for uh, uh, airplanes anymore and they turned it into a racetrack and uh, that was sort of often <laughs> the way that they went about it and uh, Sebring of course has got loads and loads of history and about to see even more made in a few moments time. Yeah, we are. We're going to be back up and rolling. We're going to get this race underway here. And it's a single file start. And now I believe we have kicked in. We've gone around and we are up and running and racing, if I'm not mistaken. That doesn't look like the start for this straight. I think we're going down the back straight currently. So we're going back down, I believe we're on the back, what would be the Ullman Strait running down into the 90 degree at the bottom. I believe that's where we are at the moment, Ed. Yep, and it's just on the horizon. You see just the mass of GD cars uh, coming towards us. And then there's a barrel on the uh, outside of the corner there. So uh, I wonder how long that barrel is going to last as we see the field just make its way through. And uh, green flags being waved so it looks like uh, at the end of this back straight uh, things could get very very interesting indeed 
Yeah, we are. We are off now as well. The running, running, running is racing. And we are up and running. Sellers out in front with Smith, Smith and Vessa there. Don't forget, Orange Zone goes all the way out to Tower Turn, which is the left-hand turn three. And some of these guys are jet-setting off. You can see on the bottom right-hand side of your screen there, Div 1 and 2 on the bottom right-hand side as this is Div 3 making their way through currently, doing an absolute stellar job. There's... There, absolutely amazing but everyone at the moment got away cleanly oh. and uh, everyone getting really destabilized over the bump at uh, the first corner as uh, Bradley said is holding that uh, seven tenths gap now to Ross Smith who we were just talking to earlier and look at the rears of that Shelby Daytona just hanging out through the infield section as that look like Carl Besser just getting a little bit off track and now even Funk is going to fancy a go and he's dragging Magnus Dahlgren with him too yeah, down through Big Ben we go, coming into the hairpin at the end there. And they're coming down into the hairpin. You can see Sellers, you can see Smith, you can see Vessa, you can see Funk as they're battling away. Funk going to the right-hand side. He didn't jinked out, didn't make it through. Round the hairpin we go on that run up the warehouse straight before we come into Webster turn, turn nine, and then Green Park Bend, which is turn 10. That is Becky Ely on your screen. Oh, slow it down, slow it down. Just manages to get it stopped there as she's chasing down the 71 of Gardner in the Div 1 and 2. But it's action all the way up through the field at the moment. Once again, doing an absolutely incredible job. Round the left hand, there they go, a green part. Before we go through 11 and 12, the tyres are there. They will do damage if you do hit them there. And it's going to be incredible racing that they've got to make sure that they don't hit. Once again, off into 13 now. Then they're going to be on that long run down into 14 before they go 14 to 13. Oh, somebody's up in the tyres. He's taking the hay bale with him. With them. Div 1's 2's. It's uh, crashed out there. It looks like one of the Porsches. Yeah. Is that Gardner? Oh, and the 33 <laughs> spun trying to avoid it. Yeah, I think there was a reaction there, wasn't there? So... I think that was a reaction from somebody in the 33 machine come round and saw them all kind of check it up and then he had nowhere to go. And unfortunately, uh, he couldn't get, um, just managed to, to avoid it. As Sellers, Smith and Besser, Funk, go down now into what is the U-turn. If we can go on board with one of them, we'll show you that it's not the corner that we know and of before down in Sunset. We're going on board now. This is normally where you start breaking. You've normally got a long flowing wall that runs around the inside. Then you start going out. Now you can see the sharpness of the turn there. That's not the traditional corner you're looking at. Before you would have that long flow against the wall. You'd miss that barrier on the left-hand side. Now we're racing. That's your pit stalls. You've only got to separate them by the hay bales on the left. Now we're going into turn one. Here now we're missing that inside wall that we normally see. There's cones got out in front of us on the run through into second bend and then up into tower turn, which is now changed, of course, before their tower is now on the back side where turn 13 normally is. So the track layout completely different. You see it's a lot tighter rear end as well. Yes, exactly. Much, much less forgiving. Also, it's quite serious to see a plane and a house right close to the circuit in the background. You'd normally expect there to be a wall in the way, but this is Sebring 1964 style, so no such luxuries here as we look at uh, JT Tammy trying to chase down at Margaret Dolgreen in the first of the uh, Ferrari 250 GTOs, number 89, of course, but he's got to hold off uh, Suvic and Lane in a Ferrari and a Daytona, respectively. So the Daytona's holding well up front, but are they going to build a big enough gap in the long run to a hold off Magnus, Magnus Dolgren? Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? We know we know the battles of the Daytonas. We know the battles of the Ferrari days. We know everything that went on in this era. We've been through it there once again. In the bottom right-hand corner, that's still Becky Ely in her Lotus battling away again trying to fight yeah they're going to start moving up on the main screen as well doing an absolutely incredible job on the left hand side there and you can see at the moment these guys are fighting it out once again the corvette on the right doing an absolutely stellar job and uh, amazing racing you see leaders at the moment sellers meyer borman and day 
battling it out in that number four machine. It's just incredible. That's JT Tammy. I love that Corvette C2. Looks absolutely amazing for me. And if I was in this series, that would be the car I'd be driving. Yes, exactly. I love also looking on board earlier at that wooden steering wheel as well. <laughs> just uh, really puts into perspective what these drivers are, uh, are working with. But uh, great uh, racecraft from the two Lotus drivers, Ben Berman and Becky Ely, who uh, both pass Rhys Gardner in the uh, Sector 2 there. And uh, there we go, that looks like uh, Gardner now slotting into third. And now he's got Cameron Barker for company. So uh, both Berman and Ely really getting the most out of the Lotuses early on, of course. And they've, of course, got one of the... They're, it's the lightest car, but also one of the uh, smallest fuel tanks. So no wonder they're going quick, quickly at the moment because they've got to make that strategy work. Oh. And look at the wall. It's hanging out near the oil drum there. I love it how you say wall. It's an oil drum and a hay bale. Um, <laughs> as they go down. Now Borman and Ely and Gardner and Barker in the Div 1 and 2s. Div 1 and 2 arms is Day and, oh, it would be the surname, Chernobyl in second with Ferrara, Ferrara in third. Div 3 arms is Mayer, Chen and Damaso with Sellers, Smith and Vesa still rocking it out in front. You can see what they are seeing behind them here on the bottom right hand side of your screen that is off the back end of becky ely i believe on the bottom right hand corner so they're running and racing and doing an absolute stellar job 105 on the clock here and if and if anybody hasn't seen le mans 66 you should definitely watch that back that's around this era and you can have a look and see they actually film a shot at Sebring from the old days where the pit lane was literally right next to the start finish lane. It's absolutely amazing. So definitely go and check that film out there. And now we're all along through the final corner, through the hair U-turn on the run up into the first bend. And, and it's still great action all the way through the film, uh, through the race here. Ed. Indeed it is. And up front in a Division 3, Carl Weiser has uh, set the fastest lap and overtaken Ross Smith in the first sector to run second. So Ross, who we were just talking to, looks like he's uh, started to run into difficulties as Bradley Sullivan's just running away but up front, 2.2 seconds to the good. Here is that battle, I believe, uh, as we see uh, Vazer and Smith and Funk all running in formation. And Carl Vazer locks up then as he uh, gets to the end of the uh, hairpin there. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of lockups going up through that area. I don't think they're quite not going to have it. You see the bump that they've got to deal with right in the middle of the warehouse straight coming down into the Webster term. Yep, once again, we've jumped up now into Gardner, Barker, Ely, Borman and Busnick there as Gardner is in fourth. That's Busnick tucked up right behind us once more. Gardner in his Alfa Romeo Julia battling it out here. An absolutely incredible... Ooh. That's a 47 there. Ed gets very close. Yeah, there we go. Ilko Busink, of course, winner in this class last time out. Desperate to take uh, another podium. But uh, Reese Gardner definitely not going to let him through because once the two Lotuses of Berman and Ely hit, it's going to be Barker, Gardner and Busink battling it out in the Alfa Romeo's and Porsches for the rest of this, quite likely. Uh, unless Lotuses can uh, both pull a big enough gap. And it looks like uh, Ely is letting Borman just run away up front and following closely six tenths behind as we cut back to Vaser, just holding on to that second place from Ross Smith. And now here's Brian Hall then in uh, which class is this? This is the AMS, is it? Div 3, Div 3. Div 3, yeah, it's, no, it is just Div 3. Yes, this yeah, is uh, Jason Whitehead challenging Brian Hall for 11th. And then uh, overall in the race, 13th, John Mayer leading the uh, Div 3 AM class ahead of Jerry Chen. Yeah, as these guys are battling it out still. this uh, The funniest thing is Sebring looks even more bumpier back in the 60s than it does today. And you do need new dentures there. And, you, well, you're going to need new dentures even more after this one. Lots of ups and downs, lots of hail bells, lots of half-cut tyres which could cause damage in general. Best lap time sellers on a 3.05.184. Three minutes and five seconds a lap. And we've still got 60, 60 minutes up and right. Well, 62 minutes here, Ed, to get going. It, it, they're going to be around here up here for ages. Yeah, purple middle sector for Bradley Sellers there. But uh, the, the gap up front, it's closing ever so slightly. So Vase is setting really, really consistent laps. He's cut the gap to 1.6 seconds now. But Bradley Sellers might be being a little bit under pressure because, of course, like we said, those Daytona Shelbys really need to get that strategy 
have to work in their favour at this point, and that's why Bradley says is pushing as much as he is as we look at the cyber links of Nikola Shokrov. Uh, he can still hold on to eighth position. You, know, you can see the difference. Camera. Yeah, you did see the difference at sunset from what we've got now to what they had then. There was contact at the top there. Nekoroshkov having contact in ninth place at the moment. That's never good, but they're on that start. Finish straight. Pit boxes separated by hay bales. Who needs safety? We don't. Not back in the 60s, dear sir, when men were men and racing was racing as they all go to the right after the pit lane exit. And they're now straight through up in through turn one, through the first bend into the second bend. And now the run up into the left hander of Tower Turn. Absolutely incredible. Porsche 904 GTS there on the screen. You can see that is Nikoshovkov with Jun and Cabrera and Pullen and Grady right behind them. There's a nasty bump on the exit of turn three as they're heading into four and five. Now we're back down in 11th place with Brian Hall in that Ferrari 250. Yes, and this is Brian Hall having a go at Angus Tong, who's just four tenths uh, ahead of him now. And meanwhile, Carl Weiser now getting defensive from Ethan Funk and Ross Smith. They know are all over him like a cheap suit in this battle for second. Look at Bradley Sellers in the uh, number 93 with that lovely, very 60s uh, hippie inspired livery just pulling away up front. Looking completely at the Oh, big crash. And is that Ross Smith in the wall? In the, probably. In the uh, tire there. Uh. There probably was. Oh, dear. It looks like it was if that was Sellers Funk and the, the 11 has Vessa. So it possibly is Smith. Yeah, and unfortunately for Mr. Smith there, he has had a bit of a moment once more as we're going into that hour. I wonder what that's done for the car and whether or not um, he has seen any damage. We're going to go to a replay screen now. We're quite far away. Oh, it doesn't come to the, the right-hand side of the, the, the oil drum. I suppose that's how we... Well, that's what it is. An oil drum yeah, and is. also the barrels. And unfortunately, he does that. So he's Ouch. running right behind Ethan Funk, tried to follow him into the corner, went a bit, a bit, a little bit too deep, and the old drum was there to meet him, and that's really cost Ross Smith. He drops to eighth in the order, but the result of this, uh, Ethan Funk got a great exit there, and oh, you see, uh, uh, Vaser hit the and hit the barrel as well, and that's why Ethan Funk's got through into second. Yeah, Vaser did the same thing for Smith. Is he going to have to pit in? It doesn't look like he is. The car might be okay. But, no, I don't think he has. He might have it on the back end. Maya, Angelidis and Chen are fighting it out in the Div 3 Ams. They're very close together. There's barely a second between the three of them as they're battling it out down in that Div 3 Am category there as well. Angelidis passed his lap on a 3.09537. There is Maya. There is Angelidis. There is Chen as these guys battling it out for that Div 3 Am lead. Let's see how this one pans out here. This could be a nice little tidy battle for a lap or so, couldn't it? Yeah, all evenly matched, all in a Ferrari 250 GTOs, of course. Uh, but Mayo has been leading since the start. Here we go, Jerry Chen having a look at Angelidis. And Angelidis will have to have his wits about him and an eye on his wing mirrors. As look at the back, is that Dave Kors? Just absolutely, oh, no, it's Barry DiMarzo, I think, just absolutely drifting it there in the middle sector as a. Uh, Go oh. through the chicane and now towards sector three then. Yeah, nasty bump on the exit into that chicane as well. That was quite an interesting sight to see. And that was out through Green Park. Then we're coming down into what would be turn 13 normally. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me there. <laughs> okay, uh, the, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I've, I've just uh, caught my throat. Uh, so there we go. But up and running now, and they're still fighting out with Maya Angelis, Chen, and Damazo once again as we look from the back end of Maya, Maya there. So we're looking back Jason from Maya. Whitehead is getting really defensive, James. Yeah, I think you're going to have racing all the way through. You can see they're almost taking off over that bump. They are literally, the front ends are up in the air and, and taking off there. It's absolutely amazing how these guys are driving these wonderful machines back from the 60s. Yes, exactly. You really have to have precision at your fingertips in these 60s cars. They've got a lot less uh, grip to work with uh, and, <laughs> and a lot less uh, horsepower as well in some cases. You think that make it easier, but it, it's, a, it's a more untamed machine, isn't it, James, as we look at 
Whitehead now. Just, he's holding on to sort of a 12th in the Div 3 class, but the Div 3 Ams are really all over him like a swarm of bees and giving him just a lot of trouble at the moment. Yeah, they are. But it's going to be the question of where is he going to go? Is he going to be able to handle it and stay in front for White? And this has got Mayo, Angelis, Chen and Damazo. Or does he slot in? He really wants to stay ahead of the class below him. Doesn't really want to let them through. So he's going to try his hardest there as we're almost up on a, on a GoPro extension camera in the bottom right-hand corner. That looks absolutely amazing as we're looking back at John Meyer, George Angelidis, Jerry Chen and Barry DeMarzo trying to get through here. This battle could rage on and rage on as well. We think the Ferraris should have no issue doing a one-stopper. Nathaniel McPhee in chat there as well. That's a lot of classes said Ian Grady. It is. Thank you so much for joining us. And Neil Borman, good to be here rooting for my boy Ben. He says as Ben is leading the Div 1s and 2s. There's a very wide line from Maya there. Almost releases Chen to come through. Chen's cleared. Angelides there all side by side. Great job from them. Down that start, finish straight under the Mercedes-Benz bridge before they go into turn one here, Ed, with literally just under 55 minutes remaining. Well, there we go. And Angelid is about to be swamped by Barry DiMarzo, as well as somebody going off track there at the back. I think that might have been uh, somebody not on the lead lap then, but uh, that's a big shame for Angelid because they were just getting held up by Whitehead and that created a sort of concertina effect. And Jerry Chen absolutely pounced on him there. And look again, the 27 having a look at the inside there. That's Angelidis getting back ahead of Jerry Chen then. Mm. Very, very briefly as the cone Whoa. is bumped out the way. See the cone get flicked out on the left-hand side of your screen with Maya Angelidis, Chen, Damazo. These are, well, more Maya Angelidis and Chen at the moment. They've lost Damazo by about 2.5 seconds, if I'm reading that correctly. There once more for Barry DiMarzo as we're on 55 minutes to go. Still some great action. There is Maya going to be held on. Is Angelidis going to be able to make the move? He's on the brakes. Whitehead still trying to escape like a scolded cat in the black there. In front of him in the 85 machine. Not really getting away at the moment, Ed, is he? Ooh, and Angelidis really putting the power down early out of the hairpin there. And now trying to get... a. Uh He's got Jerry Chen for company as well, so he needs to be careful how he manages this. He drops to a second behind the mayor, who is still getting a lovely toe from Whitehead. Uh, it's still a fair bit of slipstream down these straights, those telegraph poles so close to the circuit. Into the 90 degree corner we go, and the 85 Ooh, now is the gap. There's a bit of grass cutting as well and avoids the tyres. So uh, it's pretty much as you were then for this top four in Div 3 Am, but such a close fight. Yeah, absolutely. The Sebring track of the 60s is literally bare bag of bones. It is racing to the fullest here. You can see it there. There's no protection. There's no gravel traps. There's not a lot of nothing apart from oil drums and hay bales. As you can see them just going past there, the site of where Ross Smith had his collision there again. So we'll give you a quick rundown of the top six on the left-hand side. As you can see, Bradley Sellers leading Div 3 with Funk, Vesa, Dahlgren, Lane and Suvik in the top six in the Div 3 arms it's Maya Chen Angelides Damazo and Mountjoy as we're going to go to a replay and this is oh three wide battle uh, uh, and within that might be James Bowders going off in the 92 but if you're going to take it three wide that is what's going to happen unfortunately for them never three wide is good at a modern day circuit let alone one from the 60s Ed no, they weren't really designed with that in mind. Might go, oh, they're going to try to, oh, this is a replay, of course, of uh, the 41, 92, and 3. Yeah, Ducati there. And they just managed to avoid the tyres. That was the funniest thing. They sit, separate around the tyres like, nope, I am not touching them. As the guys went on there. Angelides is still fighting out with Chen. We've lost a couple of drivers once more, unfortunately for them. I'm trying to have yeah, a look Santiago and see Danco who that is. In the, yeah. Before James, and it looks like Fernando Fiera also had a good Yeah, we've lost, but the looks of it, Tony McCoffinan is another one that might also have just been DNF here again, Ed. 52 minutes on the clock, Ed, and we've seen nothing but great racing. So there's been an off earlier, James. Let's have a look at it. It's the number 41 machine. Oh, 
bail, bail, Dan bail. Oh, oh, no. That's probably how Dan Cott ended up in the DNF. Yeah, that's how he ended up in his DNF, I would have thought, on that one. I think he's still going, he's... actually, 44th and last. but uh, <laughs> Or 30, 43rd, once he gets past the retired car of McCoffin. McCoffin, yeah. Now we're on the battles of replay again. Ooh. Ducati again following the hay bales of Dancourt. No stewards running them out, putting them hay bales back together, though, Ed. We're, we're a bit, I'm a bit disappointed by that. Uh, that doesn't sound like an enviable job because you're just in the firing line constantly, I'd imagine. But yeah, looking like a, a very messy barnyard there. Mm. <laughs> just after the uh, S's, I believe. Can you imagine explaining it to people? What do you do for a living? I am a hay bale putter upper in Sebring's race circuit. I have life insurance because I need it. There's a big stand. Get it stopped. Oh, is that 34 of the Marzo? Yeah, he misses Angelides. Angelides goes in deep as well. Contact behind that one. That's not even a. I don't think that's somebody in their class. That was that Mount Joy. I think that's, that's the Mount Joy. Yeah, that's the, the 66 the machine in was there. Is that fighting in the same class, yeah. yeah, Angelina, Angelina goes, oh, George, get it stopped. There's Chen. DeMarzo is the 34 there. So it was them three. And then the 30 behind that is also in the mix and having a good old scrap. So they're not leaving anything on the, on the, the racetrack, are they? They're making sure they put everything out there to carry on. Yeah, the problem is Jason Whitehead has sort of become the cork in the bottle for the Dip Free Am leaders. So John Mayer has made it through as we see the first pit stop from the leaders. Even Funk comes in from Division Three in the Shell Turner Day, Day, Shelby Daytona number 35. Yeah, Funk into the pits. I'd love to see that, how they get on. Yeah. This Castro, oh, that was the one who went off right at the beginning, who we oh, said we nice. were sure. Look, there's another one there. And I think they end up coming. Oh, that's a bit of a steady on the red joint there, son. Right, mm. trying to there we go, in a different incident. Yeah. But I don't know if that was in sympathy or the fact that he just spun. I, I think he might have lost it on his own because he had plenty of warning on that accident. That was Oli Karjanlati. I think he was going side by side with somebody else and that put him to the outside, put a wheel on the grass and that was why he went round. There's, mm. Look, it's starting to get dark now and this is where the danger might creep in because Everyone's going to be very, very reliant on their headlights now. As this is the uh, <laughs> in one and two pro leaders, Borman and Ely. Becky Ely getting right in the back of the Lotus, of uh, the fellow Lotus of Borman, and they're heading for the pits. So that's their first stop, and that is going to allow Barker to re inherit the lead. Yeah, Borman and Ely covered each other. Oh, I like, you know what? I wish I was around racing in these days. Look at that pit lane. Don't come near us. We're separated. With hay safety, we've got a hay bale. Huh? Oh. No wonder there were so many um, incidents and accidents and unfortunate deaths back in the day when they've got safety equipment, which is a, <laughs> which is an oil drum <laughs> and a hay bale. They're getting a little bit spread out in the top six of the table at the moment now. As we look at a beautiful sunset over Sebring. Hope you're enjoying this as well. Kim, welcome in. Thank you so much there. Go O'Day. Go Olivia, Oliver Day there. And that is Becky Ely in her Lotus once more. That's Ben Borman, I believe. Um, in the 40, is that Ben Borman in the 46 and then Ely in the Lotus behind him? I know Lee, uh, Ely's changed liveries this week as well. If I'm not mistaken, in Daytona, she had a very questionable livery on that was not part of the time. And they wanted to keep it all very traditional. And I know Ely had to go away and get the livery changed. That's Angus Tong in the Rocky Monster. Siobhi Daytona sitting in eighth place currently so angus tong that's i believe that's alexander schultz and brian hall behind him oh it nearly wasn't behind him anymore there as it goes in and gets very out of shape yeah and that's actually gonna delay schultz and now brian hall has got a small opportunity to get past the 82 then if he can just position himself well for the end of this great the red limited starting to climb darkness starting to fall as well over Sebring in Florida here as you see a house on the inside there can uh, Brian Holt get up the inside now he's not quite close enough to pull off the move so he'll have to wait his time and be patient 
Yeah, you can see that darkness falling, can't you? It's absolutely insane how quickly it's falling here at Sebring. We're on board with Lane. That's the battle for third with Dahlgren behind him. It's getting even. It's good, but this is where now we need some good old reflectors as they're coming down into turn one. Can't absolutely see anything about from the sun that looks absolutely incredible. So um, great job again on the design body of SGS boys. But these guys are battling out Lane and Dolgram once more. Still scrapping it out for that third here. And a great job there. Oh, was that Lane going through the cones? It looked a little bit that way, James, but <laughs> it seems to somehow have gotten away. You see a blimp in the background. Uh, but, oh, here we go. This is Angelidis holding on from Chen and DiMarzo. Chen and DiMarzo going side by side as they approach the first corner. Who is it that's got the inside here? I think it might be the 34. Oh, round he goes. Uh, Angelidis, DiMarzo and Chen. DiMarzo in third in class. Chen tucked up right behind. That's the air shot. Of oh, George, George. He manages to hold it. Only just Whitehead's in there again. Myers making a little break for it further up the road. Angelina, this has got a choice now. He either makes the move on Whitehead to try and push Meyer because Meyer's escaping, or he sits there and just holds on. Well, Meyer's now being held up by Ethan Funk, who just came into the pits not too long ago. Is Oh, look at this. Angelides, George is getting really, really fed up at the back of Jason Whitehead's car, isn't he? No more black and white. He wants the red car to come through now. And uh, <laughs> it's going to get very, very dark in a minute. So it, if his memory is starting to fade, he wants to get through sooner rather than later. Now he's side by side as they go down the straight. Yeah, down into the hairpin on the right hand side. They're taking the right. Angelides did get through. That's going to allow him to close on the back of Maya as they're going up the warehouse straight once again as these guys were 45 minutes remaining still battling it out still doing an absolute stellar job as there is George Angelides in his Ferrari then behind the white heads in there over the bump they go then they drop down the undulation into turn for nine which is the Webster turn the right hand up. there's white it's got off white it's got deep there's tires on the exit Oh, I think it's avoided him. I think he avoided him. I think he chose to go left there. <laughs> he chose to do some uh, exploring there and uh, stayed out of trouble. But that means he's going to fall down to 16th in the overall order behind Dave Coors in his class as well. Yeah, he will do. As you can see, White are there, unfortunately, going off the side of the circuit. And he's now all the way down in 16th. We've got some Dip Free Ams in front of Dip Free Pros. Cause Whitehead and Tong is behind Maya, Angelidis, Chen, and DiMarzo. And in this the pits, is a James. battle on the screen. Sellers is into the pits there with Vessa behind. Vessa's going to, he's also in the pits. Lane's into the pits as well. What's Dolgren going to do? He's going up. He keeps going. Suvik, is he going to do the same thing here? Yeah. They're both in the Ferraris, Dolgreen and Suvik, so it makes sense they're able to run longer than the Shelbys. <laughs> look at how fast they're going in the pits there, not hanging around, as Bradley Sell is desperate to get back into the race because he knows him and Dolgreen are going to be in a direct confrontation. It was 11 seconds the lead before he came into the pits there. Yeah, we'll see what happens when he comes out and what sort of exit he's going to get. That's still Angelides, I believe, on the bottom right-hand corner, chasing down Mayer, 1.2 seconds, 1.4 oh, seconds. Oh, Angelides. Chen. Angelides has gone wide, yeah. Chen's just gone through in the dip freeze. Now it's chasing down Mayer again. DiMarzo's not losing time behind there. Somebody else has come into the pits on the left-hand side. You can see once more as these guys still continue to go. And George Angelides and Jerry Chen having a right go battle. Uh, Carl Vaz is out of the race, unfortunately. So that's something's happened to him just after he made his pit stop as well. Let's look at this. Still going at it are Chen and Angelides for second in Div 3M. Yeah, and we'll so focus on this. To look at the moment is the 66. That's Jerry Chen still holding on for the 27 of Angelides. who gets sideways on the bump and has that DiMarzo who's joined the party in the blue and white Ferrari. Yeah, 42 minutes on the clock. Jerry Chen, George Angelides, Barry DiMarzo scrapping it out. And they're still fighting along here now. Once again, doing an absolute stellar job in these very slippery cars there. Once more. 
as we go into the split screen action that's on board with Barry Damazo and then the, the live pitch oh, the pot. right oh Barry. the Barry no Barry no that's not right oh, oh, so as he goes and how did he avoid one. everyone and he smashes out the wooden stop boards as well. <laughs> and everyone's going to start missing their breaking point into the 90 degree right hander now because of Barry's little moment there. They're getting Ooh, dark, aren't they? That's the problem. Oh, there he is. Did we get any idea of what the situation was with Vesa? Uh, we've lost Guard now. We've lost Tavani. We've lost McCoffinen. We've lost Ferreira. And I believe we've lost Vesa as well. We'll go back to light, pit, light pitchers right about now. As these guys are battling out with Dolgren out in front with Suvik. These guys are not pitted. Schultz, Hall, Sellers. Sellers uh, lost out in the pits. He's lost out to Schultz and Hall. Meyer and Angelides are nearly only a second apart in the, the Div 3 arms. But Dolgren and Suvik battling out for the lead. I'm expecting them to come into the pits. This lap, I would probably say, Ed, on that one. Well, he, he's only lost out in the fence that every, all the other cars in front of him haven't pit because they've got much bigger fuel tanks. So... <laughs> So uh, the Corvette of uh, Tammy should be next in. And then I think we're going to see Dolgren, Sudik, Schultz and Brian Hall in the Ferraris all come in. Yeah. Sellers went into the pits, though, didn't he? He was in the lead. He went into the pits with Hall and Schultz and come out behind Hall and Schultz. I, um, it's a little bit hard for me to keep track because I'm pretty sure the Ferraris could run long as Oh, there we go. Somebody else getting into trouble there. That was like Pullen losing a place to uh, uh, Castro, I think. I think Castro losing a place to Pullen. Pullen on the right-hand side. Who is going to make it up into that seventh position. Castro is going to be in eighth. You can see the Dib 1 and 2s always seems to be very spread out here. And Oliver Day doing a great job leading by about one point, well, a minute and a bit there. Dib 1 and 2 separated by six seconds. Dib 3 Ams, well, they're almost separated by barely a second. As that is Castro trying to come back to... Astro trying to come back again at Pullen. So, great action. Yeah, George Angelina's best time with Grady and the Oh, he's going to hate me. I can't <laughs> say it. I can't Alexander. say it. That would do. Alexander there. So, um, great job from everyone. To be, to be fair, Ooh, you can, Angelides takes the lead in Div 3 Amp. You can literally just say to the drivers well done you've all done an amazing job for completing this race in the dark with no lights and just being absolutely insane as Maya Angelidis and Chen fight it out once more here yeah. absolutely incredible racing I think you've got to admit these guys doing a wonderful job in the dark at the 1964 Sebring Angelidis taken to the front is he gonna get Another second win. Is he going to be unbearable once more when he comes in for a chat for us again a little bit later? Oh, that, that's not how I would describe my first interaction with George. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's, I imagine he's going to be very, very pleased with himself. He's able to hold on to this one. But Mayer, John Mayer looked like he got quite badly held up. And that's why he's lost the class lead here and is now at the mercy or lack thereof of Jerry Chen behind as he tries to keep Angelides in check. Yeah, they're still battling it out. I, I think, that, to be honest, I would be very, I would be surprised if they literally, they literally just go at each other all the way through the race. I would be very surprised if they ever left each other's side. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible racing with Angelides, Meyer, and Chen. These guys will continue for the next 38 minutes. Who's going to make it out here? Who's going to win? Who's going to take the victory as these guys continue to battle when we've got 38 minutes on the clock? Ed, who's your money on? <laughs> I think it's got to be Angelides or Mayer at the moment because those two have just been nose to tail for quite a lot of it. But uh, <laughs> I'm not going to rule out Jerry Chen either. But yeah, Mayer just seems to have a little bit more confidence on the brakes or maybe a little bit too much given by how deep he was going just a moment ago. But up front, interestingly, uh, Dolgren starting to pull away from Suvik. The gap was a second just uh, a moment ago, and now he's starting to up his pace a bit. So perhaps uh, the strategy coming in, and that, that's why Suvik into the pits then. So first of the Ferrari 250 GTOs to come in is the 81. Yeah, I'm not expecting Schultz in. I don't think uh, Schultz, I'm sure Schultz is pitted. I, I, unless I've literally just gone blind for a minute and missed the fact that he didn't. But I don't think Schultz is 
going to be coming in. And the They've timing screen is saying Sellers and Funk uh, in the, that Div 3 group are the only ones who've hit. By the mm. way, I think Carl Vesa has got back into the race two laps down, though, in 40th position. Yeah, we lost Dan Cole, Gardner, Tavani, McCofferton and Ferreira. It's coming around the final corner now. You can see that great aerial shot once more with George Angelides leading, then Jerry Chen, then Maya, then DeMarzo, then Mountjoy. You can see all the nose stoppers on the board. 36 minutes on the clock. Dahlgren, the Funk has got one there. Dahlgren's not got any. Suvik's in. Schultz, Schultz and Suvik are in. Fair play on that one. And Vesa is back into the pits again. So, well, incredible action. I think you've got to safely admit that it's been wheel to wheel, bumper to bumper, door to door. And none of the big three amps have pitted. I'm also looking at Brian Hall, GT, JT Tammy and Magnus Dahlgren have not pitted either by the, what I've got on the screen with Dave Kors there as well. That's Andrew Dedes. That is, they're coming out behind them. You see the yellow car behind going absolutely dingy. Yeah, Dolgren's now gone in. Magnus Dolgren, I believe, has just gone into the pits. So Dolgren doing an absolutely stellar job and puts it into the pits now. Now this is where we're going to see strategy come out. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, Mayer has made a mistake, which has let Chen and DiMarzo through in that battle in uh, Div 3M. But yes, as you say, Dahlgren, uh, if he is coming in, and it's, it's a bit inaccurate because he's not shown Sellers a stop, and we definitely saw him stationary in the pits in the uh, number 93. As we cut back to the 43, this is Hall and Funk. <laughs> Feels like a uh, very bad Hall and Oates tribute act. But uh, it is Brian Hall and Ethan Funk fighting it out in the uh, Bros. 250 GTO and the Shelby Daytona. And uh, Funk, having made his stop, is uh, can be very eager not to be held up by Brian Hall here. That is actually a band, isn't it? Well, Hall and Oates is a band, I think. Hall and Oates, that was the one for Hall and Funk. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, maybe they, they were a cover band on a Saturday night. That, maybe that's where it was. I've seen that one. Uh, 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 I, you don't never know, do we? 35 minutes to go there. We'll bring up the intervals on the left-hand side so we can see where all the action is taking place back in the standings currently. And Hall and Funk going at each other once more for that fourth and fifth in the Div 3 once again. It's getting very, very dark out there. How are they actually going to cope with this? Without any lights on it, what are they going to be actually being able to see? It's a, it's a very case of a bring your own lights to Sebring, it would seem. So they're relying a lot on the headlights in the front of these GD cars. Uh, a bit of cooperation from the drivers in front of them to make sure that they uh, <laughs> see them in time as well. There's all, obviously there's the line that dip, the, uh, connotes the edge of the circuit. You may be able to see that a little bit clearer than uh, some of the others. And of course the lines on the side of some of the oil drums and the tires on the inside of the apexes as well. And there will be a few lights on the uh, start finish straight and you might be able to spot some of the flags as well uh, depending on uh, the context mm -hmm. yeah but it is going to be very very tricky at the back end of the circuit particularly going into the hairpin to be able to see uh, where people are so you can need to really be on your toes here the aerial shot shows it best you're really reliant on your headlights here as the diff free amp battle continues dimarzo being overtaken i think angelidis and chen are just yeah, absolutely no, yeah. going they've just swapped places backwards and forwards they're still swapping places here for Angelidis and Chen. So totally, you see different lines as well. It's whatever works for the car, I think. That's gonna be the thing, isn't it? We're, they're both in Ferrari 250 GTOs. So it's whatever works for the cars that they're driving and how they've got them set up. Angelidis getting a big old fishtail coming out once again. 33 minutes on the clock. It makes it literally bear on impossible for these guys to be able to see, still battling it out. Once more, Maya and also DiMarzo behind them are running side by side. But Angeli, this and Jen are just, well, uh, they look like they've been having a right old barnstorming ding-dong going on out there. Yeah, I don't, oh, as we see another hay bale <laughs> just on the exit of the corner of this lodge there. I don't think I've ever seen either of them arrive into any corner in a manner that wasn't sideways. As we see Boosink pit from the lead in uh, Div 1 and 2, for 47. But uh, interestingly up front, Bradley Sellers lapping three seconds lap quicker than Magnus Dahlgren, which is crucial because that's what he needs to do to get the Shelby, uh, to get into victory contention on that strategy where they're going to have to make at least one more stop more than uh, Dahlgren and the Ferrari. I'm just praying for JT Tammy. Come on, JT, get the Chevy over the line. Absolutely stellar job as Angelides and Jerry Chen 
still fighting it out. They're coming down. They were into the right-hander. Now they're coming down into warehouse straight, but they're coming into the left and right there. As we move away from that battle, here, that's Ross Smith, isn't it? Oh, Tom, oh. yeah. Two speed racer the breeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ross loves his livery there and did an absolutely stellar job. I know they wanted to keep him traditional. I think that's the thing within that area, within that era of time. You know, you're not going to see any bright neon cars at that point or any bright pink liveried machines. Well, saying that, you've got Brian Hall, who's got a pink car currently. Um, so, yeah, it's a great, great job that they've done on the designs. And actually, this Chen and Demarzo and Maya are doing a fantastic job once more. This is Jerry Chen. That's Damazo on the right-hand side. Is Damazo going to be able to get the inside line coming through the U-turn at the base of that? what is the back Oh! oh. That's Barry no, Damazo spinning stop. onto the grass. He's hit, the, he's hit hay bales, but he hasn't hit Andrew Lidis, crucially. Yeah, that was down. Was that down into the hair? That was coming down into turn 14. Right hand, yeah, turn 14, I believe. And there he is. He manages to hold on. Shoots of three hay bales across the circuit. And Lucky that was coming down into tower turn there, 14. It, yeah. But the, the thing is, you, you, you're half expecting it, aren't you? Look, he, he, he's just... I think it's now a battle of survival. Who's going to get through this surviving? Because that's what they need to do in the dark at Seabrook. <laughs> exactly, yes. And, uh... Especially when you start to get fatigued and the car, the tyres are not in as good condition. That's when the mistakes can creep in. As we see, Dolgreen has pit from the lead, and that's going to mean he slots out behind Brian Hall then. So uh, he's got to hope that he can keep a, a decent enough gap to Bradley Sellers to stay in that pit window, because that's where the fight's going to be. As we see, Angelidis and Chen also coming into the pits now, which means Mayer re-inherits the lead. Yeah, John Mayer takes the lead. This is Smith and Tong on your screen currently. They're still fighting out. They're going down the start finish straight. Not many lights on that uh, on that start finish straight. Literally, the lights that are there are the ones that are set up from the cars in the pits. And Smith's holding on, going around the left hander of first bend, and then through second bend he goes up into tower turn, which is turn three. Looks absolutely incredible. Just pure unadulterated racing. As that's, I believe, that's Borman on the bottom right hand corner with Becky Ely. As Ben Borman in that Lotus and Ely in that Lotus uh, uh, there. Ely has changed the delivery. Oh, Tong, 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 Tong. Did not want to be going out onto that grass at the moment. He wanted to try and keep it on the racetrack. It's given Smith a little bit of a breather as they're coming through turn four, five, and six. And then on that run through Big Ben down into the hempy. Angelidis again on the left hand side here and with Chen battling it out but then again they've been battling it out all the way through Ed Ooh. so that's a good move then from uh, Jerry Chen I believe that might be a, uh, just having come out of the pits then so the timing screen's not yet uh, updated on my end but it's certainly showing on the on the uh, on stream that Chen is ahead now and into second place but he's got a 49 second gap to Mayer of course who is yet to pit then so this is going to be absolutely crucial who comes out on top here with uh, DiMarzo who <laughs> Another 12 seconds in the race. Mm, Demarzo a little bit further back. I was just trying to see pit stop signs. It looked like Angelides did miss out on that one. Unfortunately, on the pit stops. So, um, yeah, not sure what happened to George. Whether or not he just stayed in there a little bit longer. On board with a Barker in the 79. It's got Bussink behind him in fourth. There, we'll get the... Uh, We'll give the old um, overlay a little bit of a refresh as well so we can bring you currently up to date with the interval gaps that are happening on your screen at the moment. Barker and Bussink, there you go. That's more what we're looking at. Six temps between the two of them in the Div 1 and 2 here, Ed. So this is the thing with this class. I think or all classes at the moment, we've just seen action all the way through the race. Absolutely, yeah. It's almost guaranteed with these different fuel strategies that everyone's going to start converging at the end as Brian Hall comes into the pits there. So that releases uh, Mangus Dahlgren up to fourth. Remember, he's about 31 seconds behind Bradley Sellers at the moment. So Sellers' pace has put him in potentially a position where he could pit and come out ahead of Mangus Dahlgren uh, ahead of the final stint. 
So that's going to be absolutely nose to tail as Dahlgren seeks to catch up on fresher tyres. Dahlgren in the Ferrari. Inside knowledge telling us that the Ferrari can go one stop. What do we think then? Is there going to be Magnus Dahlgren going to be making one more? I think he's going to try and one stop it. Like you say, he's made the stop that he needs to. Mm. 27 minutes left to go. I think he'll risk it. Uh, for Atlas, I definitely can't see it. risk it in the data. And he's going to have to come in again. The fuel tank just physically isn't big enough. As we look at Oliver Day, who we've not talked about too much, but the 808 has uh, been controlling things from the front. 66 seconds at a Ducati. He's had his own issues in this race. He's recovered from and Gray, who had that penalty at the beginning. So uh, Oliver, Oliver Day has been given a great opportunity and he snatched it with both hands here. Fabulous throw. Yeah, he definitely has. He's just taken it, hasn't he, and run away with it, to be honest. Yeah, quite a big gap by the first 30 minutes or 15 minutes. It was quite high up on the gap front as Eric Monet here on your screen are uh, in, sitting in the fourth in that Mistral Porsche 904 GTS as we're trying to show these guys. And Pavel, just Pavel, uh, in the Porsche 904 Chinopra. GTS. Chino yeah, that's the one. Uh, goes across the spot. Oh, no, it ain't. As I've got Ed, Ed, Ed uh, sorry, I've got Ed and Paul in my ear roll. Uh, well, well more Paul came. telling me. Yeah, the uh, I tell you what, mate, I was hearing voices the other day, trying to race, commentate, and listen to voice chat all at the same time. It was absolutely, I don't know if you've ever tried racing and commentating at the same time. It was literally insane. And I was on an oval. It was absolutely mental. Um, Jen and Angelides in the Div 3 Ams are still once again swapping backwards and forwards as Marazzi looks like he's just come around turn one with Stephen Miller in the Alfa Romeo, Julia TZ down in the Div 1s and 2s. And Dan Cott, as we know, is out here once again. Ferreira's out also. So we're aware that their guys are currently out with Gardner, Tavani, with Poplin and Ferrero. And JT Tammy in the Chevy. Go on, JT. But how much longer? That would be the question. Yeah, personal best for JT Tammy last time out, but into the pits immediately. It's a tongue. Has a bit of a moment there. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Jim. No, mate, you carry up. No, sorry, just I was waiting for Paul to finish, uh, in, uh, but no one can hear that. So <laughs> there's there's Hall <laughs> from Paul to Hall. And uh, Hall just uh, now four tenths behind Tong with that little moment as, uh, you know, Ross Smith, when he said earlier on that he hoped Angus Tong, his teammate, would climb up uh, the order to help him. I don't think he envisioned having that mistake with the oil drum and then falling back uh, right in front of his teammate. But uh, he's holding off Tong pretty well, and those two are going to have to work together to keep Brian Hall at bay because he's, uh, his pace lasts like 307.3. Uh, it's definitely quicker uh, than uh, I know that was... Um, I'm getting because Hall's actually set a much longer lap. It's Tong who set for 307.3 and Smith who set for 307.1. So Tong is actually pushing to keep to catch up with Ross Smith, his teammate, as we see JT Tammy being serviced in the pit lane, falling down to third. And Dolgreen is almost certainly going to come through Suvik as well. So that's going to mean he emerges in fifth then. So it's going to be difficult for the Corvette uh, C2 to get on the podium here, but it's not impossible for JT Tammy. He has a good final stick and he's done a good one stop strategy. He's just pitted, hasn't he? And he's still sitting in third, or is that just my eyes deceiving me? Um, yeah, is it, he's out of the pits, isn't he? JT Tammy's Ooh. out. Has he actually jumped? Or yeah, or? he's out. So he's in third. He's jumped talking, yeah. And he's done it by quite a by quite a country mile there as as um, JT Tammy. So JT putting the Chevy up on the podium. Has Becky pitted? And does she have to pit again? They've all gone in and pitted at least once. We do think the Lotus should be okay. I don't think it should have to pit. Her and Foreman should be good to the end, Phil. So thank you very much for that one. And Kim D for the 808, which is Oliver Day, who is leading his class by literally a minute eight and has done an absolutely incredible job. He's been leading for quite a while. As you see, the top six getting slightly more spread out here than what we're used to here. And Vesa looks like he's back in the pits in that Daytona. He's six laps down. I would be very surprised if he carries on any. And as we said, Bullman and Ely actually going into the pits again. So the Lotus has got the smallest fuel tank. So this is going to allow Barker to close. And this will need to be a quick stop, of course. And it, yeah, and it will be a quick stop. So. This could be very, very interesting in terms of whether Barker can hold on to the lead if he's able to get out ahead of them. Here's Borman then. 
Fima Ely behind that. Flash of light behind. That's Barker. I think it's Barker anyway. He's about eight seconds. But no, this is Cameron Barker. <laughs> go so Ben Bowman Becky Ely should be released any moment now Barker with Boosink in tow coming out now Ben Bowman has he held on to the lead that's Angelidis right next to him in the other class then and Becky Ely she gets out into second place then so this has worked out beautifully for the Lotus duo for the uh, Futekigo uh, monsters <laughs> sorry oh, I, 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 really wide Sorry, I didn't catch that name. If you can just let me know what that was there again, as Becky Ely is off the side there, and Ely manages to hold on to the dip one and two second place. Barker right behind her, pushing it as well. That's Busanink off the side of the second, spitting up some grass on the way through. This dip one and two could come alike by the end of this race here, Ed, and I think that's what we're probably expecting. Yeah, uh, Becky Ely certainly won't want to have too many off-track moments as Busanink. Oh, how did he save that coming through the S's? The Joy Motorsports car was had a tank slapper and a half there, James, as we see yeah. Ethan Funk uh, going into the pit. Yeah, so Tammy in the Corvette, only 12 seconds down on Bradley Sellers then. So does Sellers have to come in again in the Daytona? That's the big question here, because Funk had to come in again, and surely Sellers will too. I hope so, because Funk's in the same shape. Um, JT uh, Dolgren's in the same car as Sellers. And there wasn't a lot of difference between when they pitted, if I'm not mistaken. I think they pitted literally near enough at the same time. So it looks like we've lost Alexander Schultz in that Ferrari. Ross Smith sitting in sixth. Suvik at the moment. JT Tammy in the Corvette. Well, he's looking like a potential winner here because he's done his pit stop and he's got it out of the way. He has, yes, but uh, Bradley still is he's pushing to try and build a bit more of a gap. And he, he could be a threat near the end. You never, never know with uh, 20 minutes left Ooh. to go as we look at the 35 of Funk. Just uh, rising over the crest and uh, on the Alpines, uh, having even more of a moment there as well. But Subic right behind Ethan Funk, but Funk having just come out of the pits, should be able to get those uh, tyres bedded in up to the temperature and uh, pull away here, you would think. Well, you would hope so, but this could leave JT uh, Tammy being your lead car on circuit after what is planning to be a second pit stop. This is what happened to Becky Ely there as she runs very 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 wide on the outlet after the pit stop and bumps it back on to the racetrack so becky Ely there doing a stellar job and i can guarantee you now ed if you kill call her eli one more time she's likely to go and kick you <laughs> yes yeah, so sorry to back you then <laughs> it, 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 yeah, get it right as we had some lots of driver last season with dan peoples who could not seem to get it into his head but it is Ely. So, uh, but Becky Ely in second place, chasing down Ely, ben easy. Okay. Ely. Ely. She, she, will, she will, yeah, she will guarantee that she'll call you out on it as well. So, uh, there we go. Uh, but Borman, Ely, Barker and Bussing are the closest battles currently going on on your screen. We've got DiMarzo and Mayer not too far back with Chen and Angelides not too far back. So, the dip three arms not quite giving it up. They're still fighting to the bitter end with 19 minutes remaining. Yeah, DiMarzo, I thought, was going to completely lose it there. But again, somehow kept the Ferrari pointing in a straight line. He's had some big moments in this race so far. As Look at this. Is this Mayer? And uh, that's a lapped car. I think that's not Angelides uh, letting him through, is it? Uh, no, it isn't. Yeah, so the 88 still down in third and holding off DiMarzo. Yeah, Maya still holding off to Maya's over that third and fourth in the dip three arms. Angelidis and Chen having a great old scrap. You can see that. Oh, man. That up and down Angel Angelation. That's a, that is one of, I believe that's a dip three going past them there. Is that a dip three? Hard to enlarge after being lapped in the 33. Yeah. So they've just gone past on that one, but still an epic scrap with the Marzo and Maya. As these guys go off through Webster and Green Park, Ben, they're going to be around the right hander, which would be turn 11 and 12 normally. Where you think they should come up on the track, they, they actually drive a little bit longer than what you're expecting. Hence, we're getting three minute lap times here as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you are going to start to see as night falls, uh, the sort of that kind of almost. Uh, mini uh, midnight sort of effect where the, the times will improve, especially those who've just pit uh, on the fresher tires and the fuel tanks on some of these cars are a little bit smaller uh, than others too. So uh, the fuel will burn off quite quickly. As we look at this, DiMarzo all over the back 
of John Mayer and looking to make a move then. And that's the 93 right-hander coming up then. Is DiMarzo far enough alongside on the inside? Looks like he is. That's through into third place then. So Mayer down to fourth. Through currently round turn 14 on the run down into the back stretch, which is traditionally known now as the Ullman Straight. Once a more coming into the right hand, a U turn of 16 and 17. DeMarzo and Mayer not leaving each other alone. They're going to constantly want the position. Mayer's now trying to have a go. He's got the inside line, I believe, coming into that U turn. Is he going to be able to make it stop? Is he going to be able to make it stick? You can see DeMarzo's tried to back, cut back, and has made that work there, Ed. Yeah, DeMarzo just set him up to switch back up the inside, sort of suckered him, dared him into breaking too late there, and it paid off then, so he's able to defend third position. But while these two squabble, 18 seconds behind Angelidis, uh, he is only 2.1 seconds behind Chen then in the battle for the class lead. So uh, these two starting to get left behind here. Yeah, no, a little bit, a little bit. DeMarzo, well, DeMarzo is 18 seconds back, if I'm not mistaken, so he's a long way back currently at the moment for Barry DiMarzo and Meyer. That's what the pit stop cycle has kind of done to everybody. Jiggled it all around. Sellers out in front by 12 seconds. We do think he's going to have to stop again. Coming into the last 16 with Dolgren who did stop again. So he's pitted uh, no, Dolgren's pitted once. Sorry, it was Funk who pitted again in the Daytona. And of course Sellers is also into the Daytona as we watch the night sky in the bottom right hand corner. As literally at the moment, that is practically all we can see. As this, this is, it just seems like a nice little scenic shot going on in the bottom right hand side there with Sellers, Tammy and Dolgren with Funk and Suvik and Smith. Your top six in the Div 3. Still continually battling on here, Ed. And I think the overall it's just been an epic race, hasn't it, for all of these guys. Absolutely. Uh, even Oliver Day in <laughs> Div 1 2 Am with that 77 second gap, he's really fought to build that as big as he can just to make sure that in case there's any niggles, any little last minute splash and dash, the 808 is going to be absolutely prepared and will have a nice gap to pit into. How dearly Bradley Sellers would love a gap to pit into because he just. Uh, He's been able to gain a second on uh, Tammy because it was 11 seconds just a few short moments ago, but it's nowhere near as big enough as he would really need it to be realistically. So this splash and dash at the end, it's going to be uh, a very tense, tense moment for Bradley Sellers and Rookie Monsters. Do we think, though, he's going to hang on? If he's been saving the fuel, he might be able to. Oh! Uh, that is all oh, the 34 gets a bit loose. <laughs> yeah, Barry DiMarzo, I believe that was with Maya behind. The battle in front of them. Chen's opened up a 2.3 second gap there. And unfortunately for Barry DiMarzo, was well, looking a little bit spicy. You can see what the guys can see as we're on the top part there of, the, I believe that's the roof, rear right of Maya. I mean, the these guys, they, yeah, that's very bizarre, isn't it? And then we go down the right hand of, oh, 14, and now on through 15. Avoid that oil drum he did avoid it so now we're on the run down the back stretch and doing an absolutely amazing job that is looking like one of the closest if not the closest battle on screen on on the track at the moment is this Maya and demands those Ducati looks like he's had a DNF oh that's a big shame because he was quite away uh, at least a uh, 40 35 seconds ahead of Adam Gray who's now going to re-inherit that uh, second position in the number 63. And this is after having to take that penalty at the beginning of the race, of course. So that really shows you can recover from that. He's three seconds ahead of, of Moine. So now there suddenly could be a little bit of a battle for uh, second in uh, our class at the bottom there, Div 1 and 2 am. But uh, that is a big shame for Ducati because uh, I don't... Uh, that's such a shame with 13 minutes to go to be uh, lose that second in class. This was the Angus yeah. Tong also being serviced in the pits. Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to release Day with an even insurmountable gap that he's got now. Up front, Sellers has got 13, well, back down to 12 seconds. Dolgren's 35 back, 40 behind that there with Funk. So, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see if Sellers has got to come in, where's he going to be? This is Maya and DiMarzo. They're still fighting out in the circuits. They're on their way around Big Bend, coming down into the hairpin here. So an incredible job by these guys. 
as they still continue to scrap it out. Obviously, the hairpin now has got a nice little hotel overlooking on it at the, the, they're currently in the modern day. Here to the outside. Oh, he's going to try and go round. He can't. He's not going to be able to get it. Now he's going to try the inside run from... And Stella's in the pit. Eight down into nine and ten. Bradley Sellers did free. Leader into the pits. It's going to be JT Tammy. It's looking like it's going to be JT Tammy. He's going to get through, I believe. He has done. JT Tammy has taken the lead as we keep an eye on this battle with Maya and DeMarzo as they're on the run now into the right hand of Webster Turn. And then there's going to be the left there. And through that one they go and off through turn 13 and running down into 40. Yeah, and it looks like Maya oh, didn't quite. Oh, did actually, no, didn't quite get the exit that he would have wanted then. So Barry DiMarzo uh, recovering well from that. How far behind is Bradley Sutter's going to emerge? He's going to come out just a few seconds ahead of Magnus Dahlgren then. So he's got three seconds to work with. That's the battle for the last 11 minutes. He's got to push like hell to try and catch JT Tammy. Yeah, I think this could be JT Tammy's win. I think this could be JT Tammy's win. Come on, JT. Setting up. Sellers fastest lap 304.115 JT's 306.029 so two seconds a lap and they've only going to have what they do in three minute lap times aren't they 369 he's only going to have three and a half laps times that, that by two he's only going to have seven seconds made up if he carries on at two seconds and he's not going to have enough yeah, it could really require a mistake from JT Tammy to bring Bradley Sellers into this, but uh, he, he's already taken uh, quite a bit out on his outlap here. It's gone from uh, 18 seconds to uh, 17 and a half then, so Bradley Sellers has got to push to keep his hopes alive here. Second would still be great, but how dearly would he love the win? How dearly would JT Tammy love to deny him? Yeah. It's coming down in 16 seconds. The question is, is gonna can he hold on to that? Can JT Tammy hold on to the lead? He's gonna try. He's got to try in that Corvette C2. And once more, he's doing an absolutely stellar job. Meyer's DNF'd. John Mayer is DNF'd. Is there a reason on the screen that we can see? I thought he sort of went a bit wide fighting DiMarzo and he dropped to about a second behind, and then something else must have happened may have been uh, had some sort of technical error on uh, his end then well maybe he just had a straight tech disconnect or something from the server unfortunately for jt tammy in the dip freeze so oh, no, he's uh, now mayor. Uh, still uh, john mayor sorry yeah john mayor sorry i was reading that at the same time john mayor in the fourth place in the dip freeze there as jt tammy still leads um us away absolutely incredible job a little bit more spread out than what we're used to at the moment here, Ed, as well. They're a little more spread out. Yeah, certainly are. Uh, but, of course, they might converge in these last nine minutes. Uh, Ellie, has a, <laughs> she has closed the gap to 1.2 seconds to her teammate Borman, is it? Uh, Ely. Oh, you can keep changing it every time I say it. <laughs> I thought you said I was saying Ely before, and you said it was wrong. No, you said you said Eli. Oh, Eli, okay. Right, I... I've got to say it quickly. I can't. I can't worry about whether it's an I or a Y. Yeah, we we will correct you because she okay. will correct you. <laughs> well, whatever I say, you're you going to get on my ass about it. So it's oh, <laughs> we're not going to get on, on any parts of your anatomy. Thank you very much, young oh, sir. You. <laughs> <laughs> so Becky Ely with Ben Borman leading the Div One and Two. She's closed up by you though, and she she's gone. What was it? Two and a half seconds down to one point one now. Yeah, uh, so Borman might have to be looking in his rear ring mirrors uh, before too long. Looks like Barker slowly being dropped out of this uh, fight for the lead. Might have to settle for third at this rate in that uh, Div 1 and 2 pro battle. Yeah, I think it's going to have to, unfortunately. I don't think it's quite going to get close enough. He's not a million miles away, though. With eight minutes left on the clock. He's not a million miles away, so we could have a nice little three-way fight here with these guys but i don't think it's quite going to be close enough pull down a one point second 1.7 and we've got seven minutes so it is possible ed it is yeah and especially if the lotuses are a little bit uh short on the fuel tank but i think they pit close enough to the end what was it 25 minutes left to go when they pit so they should have enough fuel to make it to the end i think 
uh, fairly comfortably uh, without having to save any fuel. So uh, it is going to come down to driving, isn't it? As Angelides sets uh, a new class best lap of the race in Ifriam as he tries to chase down Chen. This is battling that out here as well. Excuse me, I'm battling a bit of a, a bit of a bugs as well. I've got a flu going around my arms at the moment as well. So Barry De uh, Cabrera, is that Cabrera in, in the yellow and blue? There were Grady in front of us in the red. As these guys battle, battling it out once more. So a stellar job from these guys again. They're fighting it out for 25th and 24th on the racetrack. And I believe that is 6th and 7th. 8th in class. In, yeah, 8th in class. Yeah. Eighth in class there, but it's 24th and 25th overall with all the cars on the race circuit battling away there. So great job from them, Ed, as we're coming into that final little bit. Yeah, it's so important to keep the concentration up at this late phase of the race with just a few minutes, a handful of laps to go, uh, depending on where you are on the racetrack, of course. Uh, yes, uh, Grady is going to have to pull out the stops to keep the number 50 of Alfredo Cabrera solidly behind him then as we move into the closing stages and uh, look at Becky she's only 1.1 seconds behind uh, teammate Bullman now so this is uh, going to be an interesting moment for Ben how hard will he fight uh, his teammate there in the sister Ford number 72 uh, Lotus Ford I should say well we're going to find out but I'm pretty sure whatever's going to be left they're going to leave it on the racetrack the trouble is being held up here yeah, they've, they're going to be leaving it on the racetrack. Unfortunately, though, they've got Barker not too far away. As that is, I can't actually see that goes too quick. I mean, it's a 2 four, six, isn't it? In front of them at the moment. I believe so. Oh, oh. <laughs> they're getting ready at exactly the wrong moment for Ben Bullman there. As he has to back right off at the chicane. And now... Oh, uh, it goes on the grass as well. Now Not Becky Ely is only a tenth behind and pulling alongside to the outside. Yeah, Becky Ely is running side by side with Ben Borman down into the hairpin. Hey, I'm not the one saying it wrong. Um, as we go down into the, the hairpin. It's changing it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh dear. <laughs> I think I might have realised what the livery was on Becky's car that might have ever <laughs> to see the rear bumper there. Sorry, oh, this is and Barker a bit of a blueprint. This yeah. is bringing Barker back into it as well. And uh, is that him uh, just behind the uh, lapped car there? Becky tries to get alongside in the 72 and it moves well out of the way. There's the uh, 264. Yeah, Barker's going to be absolutely wishing that that machine does get out of the way as fast as possible as we look back from Ben Borman. That's Ely in behind us. Uh, so we're on that run down through Big Ben down into the hairpin at the bottom there. Barker does make him, he gets it clear. He's now only 1.1. This could be a nice little freeway fight, as I believe that this should be, depending where the leader is on track, this might actually be these guys' final lap because of their lap times at the current of a 3.12. And they've got run from 13 to 14, 14 to 15, and a U-turn. As Cabrera has got a penalty, so oh, it's possible he just got that past Grady as well. Yeah, so it could be these guys' final lap, depending where the leader is, as they're round turn 14 and on their run now down to 15. Uh, once again, before they go down into the U-turn here, so this could be a three-way fight between Borman, Ely, and Barker as JT Tammy is on the race circuit currently. And JT in the number one machine for the Stingray. Corvette leading the way as he's on, I believe that's the backside of the circuit, isn't it currently, to the start finish straight. So this will be his final lap once again as JT in that Chevy there. He's done a great job at he. he utilized the fuel strategy all the time and done an absolutely amazing job. Yeah, he built the gap and that was really what's put him in this position. Bradley sort of still catching uh, by about a second and a half per lap, but that's not quick enough to get 12.6 seconds and closing, but uh, he's going to run out of time and run out of laps here. So Bradley still is his 
push all he was worth, but just like we saw in Daytona, he's get, he, that late pit stop uh, ended up costing him, and that is the problem with the Shelby Daytona, is that you've really got to build a big enough gap, and if you can't do that, then you end up in this position where you're just chasing and running out of time, despite being faster, and Borman really having to get defensive now. There's another lap car in the way. Yeah, Ely right behind him. Oh, that's coming up through turn four, five, and six, I believe, before they go on the run round big bend. And coming down Parker into the well. hairpin. Parker to the yeah. outside of Ely. They're going to be running through, but there's JT Tammy. He's making the final run here. He's flashing, telling them all to get out the way, please. Here, as he's desperately urging them. So they go free wide instead. As JT jeopardizes it, they're free wide on the bottom. Oh, Ely's off. Ely's off. Oh, no. She's got it all wrong down in the hairpin. And Barker takes the lead in Div 1 and 2. Yeah, Ben Barker comes from third to first. And unfortunately for Becky Ely, just got it all wrong into the hairpin bit on the bottom right there, he just caught an end of it as JT Tammy is coming through the leader by 10 seconds at the moment is JT, he's done an absolutely amazing job, there is Becky Ely on the top left, oh steady there Borman as he gets a slide on, he takes the position back from Barker, keeping an eye on the leader, we're keeping an eye on Borman and Barker and Ely on the bottom, he feels the right hand side, as these guys continue to scrap right down to the line here once more in what can only be perceived as absolute incredible racing and a great job from JT Tummy on that run through Big Ben I believe he's coming down into the hairpin if I'm not mistaken yep uh, so just a few 40 seconds to go then uh, to separate uh, JT Tammy from victory but we also see Mountjoy retiring late on Tom Mountjoy in a Div 3 Am that's a shame he would have liked to make it to the end though they wasn't quite in that lead fight jerry chen looking pretty solid he's built a big gap to george and angelidis so he's going to win by 4.4 seconds as things stand but uh for ben borman or oh, the end cannot come soon enough because cameron barker is just really attacking him all over the back of him like a cheap suit at the moment but he's going to have if i'm not mistaken where is barker where is borman and not they else should barker's ahead I think, it's yeah, they should. I'm trying to work out if this is going to be their final lap because they're in front of JT Tammy on track. But the time's run out, so they're going to have to go. Oh, that is Borman. Unless oh, JT no. gets through now, through the hairpin, Borman and Barker have got to go one more while JT Tammy is going to come over and take the check and flag. So Borman and Barker are going to get one more lap there. And JT Tammy comes over. The line at Sebring, he takes the victory for the Div 3s and the overalls. Good old JT Tammy in the Corvette Stingray. Go JT. Yeah, and it's going to win by about uh, six, seven seconds over Bradley Sellers. So Sellers will just be wishing there was two or three more laps in the race. But he does at least hold on to second from Ethan Funk and Magnus Dahlgren in third and fourth. Yeah, it did, definitely did do there as well. JT Tarry, Sellers, Funk, Dahlgren, Suvik and Hall are your top six in the Div 3s. What's happening in the Div 3 Ams? Is Chen over the line yet? As we'll pick up on Jerry Chen. There he is there. It's a bit difficult to see where he is on the racetrack from that shot, to be blatantly honest. I think he's actually... Oh! oh. That's like one of the Alpine being sent into the, into the background at the... Uh, that looks like the uh, 90 degree right, is it? It's at turn 14, yeah, before they on the run uh, down the back stretch, down into turn 16. Jerry Chen's going to come over and take the win in the Div 3 hands are to find it out for most of the race with Angelidas. And now Jerry Chen opened up a 3.1 second gap and has done an absolutely incredible job after the pit stops. He's just kind of broken away, broken away and broken away. And here comes Jerry Chen from the Flying Kiwi Racing Ferrari, taking that checkered flag in that Div 3 AM category and takes the victory overall in that category. Absolutely stellar job. What's happening? We think Oliver Day's won the Div 1 and Div 2. That's a definite. Now we're going down to Barker and Borman, who are in the Div 1 and 2s. Barker's still leading the way. I don't think Borman's going to get close enough over this final lap, though. Nope, uh, I think that mistake at the U-turn uh, really, really cost him. So Cameron Barker 
uh, just biding his time in third and let the Lotuses run into trouble. And uh, the Alfa Romeo Viewer TZ number 79 has profited as a result then. Yeah, he definitely has. This is going to be coming over the line now. So great job from these guys. Great action all the way through, really. Absolutely, yeah. There wasn't really too many dull moments in this. If you see somebody else getting you bend catastrophically wrong and rejoining. Ooh, that's, a, that's not a one of the of, of other lotuses, is it? Uh, it's only an odd livery there. And I can't tell from this distance. Looks like a dot on there. No, it's one of the uh, black and white. Uh, it's the 174, of course. So uh, that can't just. Uh, that must be Matthew Overton, of course, and another mm -hmm. Alfa Romeo. Uh, just having his own issues down in 28th position, just looking to finish the race. But it uh, looks like Barker and Bullman will be some of the last to cross the line then. Through comes Barker and uh, Cameron Barker. Yeah, uh, yeah, run to the line to go. I think there's a couple that haven't finished. So everybody is probably not in the pits at the moment. Has not mm. finished. Barker and Bullman, it's a bit hard. Seller, JT Tammy, we know, has. Sellers has everybody's finished now apparently so Ooh, a great job I'm from all of these go so nathaniel mcphee well done oliver day yeah took the victory by an absolutely country mile and fell across the pond well done on a great race becky congratulations on your third better luck next time yep got it all a little bit wrong in turn 14 we'll be able to bring you up the results very shortly there they are Div free first with JT Tammy out in front with Bradley Sellers in second. And then you've got Ethan Funk, Magnus Dolger and Timon Suvik, Brian Hall and Ross Smith. And then in the Div free arms, it's Jerry Chen, George Angelides and Barry DiMarzo. Then we go down into the Div free arm. No, hold on. Where are we? Hold on. Right, Div 1 and 2. Cam Barker is in first with Ben Borman in second. Becky Ely in third. And now Go Busanik in fourth. Daniel Herlock fourth, fifth. David Jun in sixth with Diego Castro seventh. Alfredo Cabrera in eighth. And Alexander in uh, tied eighth. Did they go over the line together? And there with Scar Pope in ninth. Okay, moving on. Div one and two arms. Oliver Day did take the victory by an absolute country mile. Stellar job from him. Adam Gray in second. Eric Monet in third. Pavel in fourth. James Bowders fifth. Philippe Pomerazzi sixth. Stephen Miller in seventh. Philippe Ducati uh, in eighth. He didn't finish, I don't believe. He DNF'd with Santiago Dancor and Fernando Ferreira DNFing as well. Now, moving on. Has everybody done and dusted? We're going to get a couple of drivers in for a chat. We will be able to have a chat with Ben Borman, who is sitting there with JT Arrive and Drive Tammy and Oliver Day. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll bring in Oliver Day very, very shortly and have a chat with them before we head off here as well. Thank you so much for um, joining us. Don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells and do all that other fancy jazz. That is completely free on YouTube as well, whether you're watching on the CMS or the JBB YouTube channel. Don't forget, hit all of the fancy, lovey dovey things that allows our channels to grow and, and um, absolutely incredible growth as well across both channels. So thank you so much for that one as well. Oliver Day is in the interview room. Oliver, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm all right. How are you guys? I'm all right, mate. Not bad at all. I um, just watched a very interesting race, and I've just watched you go on a Sunday drive around Sebring. Yeah, except for when I hit uh, those oil barrels or somebody gave me a nice little tap on the bum. Yeah, it was all right besides that. Oh, well, you know, what more could you ask for? But you survived and you finished, I think it was about, like by 90 seconds. 93, I think, was the final gap. Yeah, 93 oh. seconds. It's not bad. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I just out there to provide entertainment for you. So 93 seconds gives you a talking point, but I gotta. Uh, well, well gotta we did that. Battles. Yeah, we had a lot to talk about during that one while we we're tracking down your second place. What was it like out there? Because Sebring is a fun circuit in the modern day layout. How is it in the olden, uh, in the 64 layout? I like it a lot, except when people move the 
the hay barrels around and then you lose your breaking points and your turn in points and things like that. So that adds a bit to it. Well, there we go. And going forward, though, what do we think we're going to see from Oliver Day? You had a couple of fans in the YouTube chat today. Kim D on the 808 was cheering you on. And Nathaniel McPhee said, GG's all well done, O'Day. So a couple of fans out there, bud. Yeah, well, I, I tell folks, you know, about what's going on here and that it might be some entertaining watching. And, yeah, they come out and check it out and they like it. So, yeah, that's mostly on you folks, too. Well, thank you so much for that one, Oliver. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Uh, Kim and Nathaniel, thanks again for watching and supporting. Absolutely. It's done a job. Well, Oliver, thank you so much for joining us there. And much appreciated. And we'll have a catch up as the season goes on. Cheers. Take care. Congrats, Ollie. Right. Next up, let's bring in, should we go with Ben Borman? I think we should. Uh, as well, we'll have a quick chat with Ben here. Ben, welcome in, dear sir. How are you? I'm great. Great? Almost. <laughs> Almost great. Almost great. Fantastic race. I want to say congratulations to Cameron. Uh, chucked it away last corner in the last but one lap. Tried to give the lead to Becky, which she took for about half a second. And they got it wrong. <laughs> oh, but it was so much fun. Yeah, it looked quite fun. How was it out there in the Lotus? What was it like overall? Uh, beautiful. It's just so much fun to drive. The track has just got bits and pieces you can bounce off uh, nicely, and the the Lotus just responds to everything. So it's really quite quite a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, Ben. Um, how was it, the racing coming down into turn 14, um, you know, the final one but lap, did you think this could be a one-two for you and Becky? Oh, that was looking, that was looking on for several laps. I was trying not to think about it. Um, I did think about traffic and I thought we'd be better going through it together rather than uh, stumbling over it one by one. And we just happened to meet the traffic uh at the S's each lap, and um, that screwed us over. So, what do you think going forward? Where do we think we're going to see yourselves up in the, up in the championship going forward? Because you know you've still got a long old season calendar, haven't you? There's a lot of racing left to go here. Uh, oh yeah, and yeah, we'll want to be fighting for podiums all the time. I think, um, and uh, I just want to say it was so much fun racing with Becky, um, uh, and I had a moment just cheering her on as uh, as Cameron went off and she came back through. Um, <laughs> and it, oh, just, just so much fun. So, yeah, we want to be fighting and having fun all the way through the season. Wow, awesome job, much Ben. Thank you so much. VR. Anyway, sorry? Much better than VR disconnections. Yes, we don't want any more of them for Becky. Well, well uh, are you in VR as well? As well? <laughs> yeah. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Ben, anyone you want to shout out? Uh, just everyone at CMS is uh, so much fun racing with everybody. My dad's actually watching this time. Hello. Uh, and that's it. Hey, Dad, your son's on TV. So, uh, Mr. Neil Borman now. Oh, oh, you know him? No, I don't know him. He's, he's typed in chat, you know. Oh, dear. Well done, everybody. Yeah, Neil Great did say, event. I'm here to cheer on my boy. So I assume yeah, yeah. that meant he was your dad, but I didn't want to say anything well, just to make sure. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what else he's going to be, but yeah, hopefully we'll go with that one. But you know, he said, well done, everybody. Great event. Thanks to the mention, James. So there we go. Well done, Ben. Thank you so much. Yes. We look forward to seeing what else you can do over the season. I hope so. Take care. Cheers, Ben. All right, next up. We have got Jerry Chen. We're going to have a chat with Jerry after some epic scrapping. We have George Angelides, Barry DeMarzo all the way throughout the race and some actions with John Mayer as well. We managed to take the victory in the Div 3 Ams. Jerry, you welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm good. Uh, hey, guys. That was epic. Whew. That that first, uh, I don't know, like 10, 12 laps, the four of us were just all over each other. Um, it was so awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, it definitely was going forward. What did you think? Did, did you wonder how it's going to end, though, Jerry? Because you know when people get close together like that, it's always going to be difficult, and it always generally will end one or two ways, won't it? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the four of us have been racing together a while, so I think we're pretty good. We, we give each other room if somebody's on the inside in the braking zone, so there's no uh, there's no chopping people off. So I I, I thought it was pretty good, um, but yeah, I could tell like I was stuck between George and Barry there for a while, and I could tell Barry was very loose on the brakes and George was very loose on the throttle. <laughs> So I was just sitting in the middle, waiting for one of them to make a mistake, saving my tires. And uh, I think George used up his rears because the second stint he was he was losing time to me pretty fast. So yeah, but, yeah. after that, I think it was after the pit stops. I think as well, he dropped right yeah. off. And and I think that was the thing. Was it always going to be tough on tires? And did you always think you'd get the one stopper with the fuel? Uh, yeah, I was saving fuel the first stint just to make sure. Um. I think I had about one and a half laps of fuel at the end, so it, it was close. But I think you know, if if you save fuel the first stint, you could definitely do it. Um, but it was so much fun just racing the four of us. <laughs> that I was like, I was like, oh, I gotta save fuel. Oh no, but I gotta rev it to redline to keep up with George. <laughs> yeah, if in doubt, flat out, mate. Yeah, that, that, exactly. that, that, <laughs> you'll take the fuel stops when you take them, right? At the end exactly. of the day, you know, yeah. if, if we have more of the same from you guys, like we did here today, going forward, how do you think the season's going to be? Oh, I think it's going to be like this every race. The four of us, I mean, you know, you could you could tell from the race laps, we're we're all about the same lap times, and it's just who's braver going to the breaks into each corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for joining us, there, bud. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Uh, nope. Thanks for the broadcast, guys. No worries, Jerry. Take care, mate. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, Jerry. Yep. Right. Next up on the list, the man who has taken the victory with his one-stop strategy, pulled out at an absolute masterstroke, and he finished in my favorite car as well, the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. JT, Tammy. JT, welcome in, buddy. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty good, man. Pretty good, dude. You just went out and won Sebring. Yeah, no, it was it, it, definitely good for me. I mean, the, the strategy worked out well, and uh, I stayed relatively out of trouble. So it's uh, it, it it was good. I'm I'm glad I was able to do it. I love this track. <laughs> yeah, and you won by nine seconds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the uh, the fuel advantage. Did you think though that when the guys behind you, in front of you, like? You know, we had Bradley Sellers went in, didn't he, in the Daytona, and and I think it was Ethan Funk went in. Did you sit there and think, I'm going to do this? I'm actually going to win this? Not not until about the final 10 minutes or so. Um, I was a bit worried about the Shelby's pace early, early on to pull enough of a gap to the point where they could catch up to me at the end. Um, luckily, that wasn't the case for me. Um, but it was... It was definitely a bit of a worry. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I had forgot that Bradley was in the Shelby going in the final stint. I thought he was in a Ferrari, so I was, I was actually quite worried that he was going to make it to the end. And uh, based on the timing, it looked like I was possibly going to have to do an extra lap, which I didn't have the fuel for. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was, I, you had loads of time, JT. I just want to slow it up a little bit, make sure you didn't have to do that extra lap there going forward, though. Where do we see? Where do we see this thing, Ray? You're the only one in the field. Where do we where do we think you're gonna be placing it? Oh, uh, I don't know. We've got we've got some tracks up ahead that's gonna be quite difficult for me. Um just the the nature of the some of these tracks. I mean, next I believe we're at uh we're at Targa Floria. Mm hmm Uh that's gonna be a bit tricky. Um Spa, I'm not sure on the old layout. Um I'm expecting hopefully a good run at Lamar. Uh if the brakes hold up well, but uh, yeah, some of the hill climbs, Goodwood, uh, I, I I think we'll struggle a bit more pace wise. Did Ross update you what's got to happen at Le Mans at all, JT? No. So he hasn't said that. Basically, I, I thought he might have put the announcement out before, where basically he said everybody's got to start in their kitchen and then run to the rigs as they hear the buzzer. I'm I'm in for that. And it's all got to be done on camera so we can see it, make sure that you're all legit <laughs> running. 
Everybody with GoPros. GoPros, yeah. We want all the all the feeds, all the feeds in coming into the broadcast to see old Paul have a right old panic trying to control fifty four camera feeds. That would be an interesting one. But you know, <laughs> I said to Ross. Yeah, I said to Ross, you should have made that happen. I said, that would have been amazing at Le Mans, seeing you all sprint to your rigs. <laughs> I mean, we, we were we were briefly discussing after Tuesday uh, about doing a standing start today uh, when, you know, they're all staggered on the grid, kind of, mm. you know, as close as we could feasibly to, to realistic uh, starts at this time. But uh, I think it was ultimately decided that would be a bit too chaotic this early in the season. But uh, that would have been fun. <laughs> Oh, mate, it would have been amazing. Come on, get to your cars, run, boys, run. <laughs> want to see all your feeds at Le Mans running to your rigs. JT, thank you so much for joining us there, buddy. Anyone want to shout out before we let you go? Uh, George, uh, especially Ben, Ross, the, the entire crew that made this possible, you guys. This track that is made from scratch is absolutely phenomenal. It's, yeah. It is so well detailed. It is such a pleasure to drive. It is It is a lot of fun. and that's That's all based on you know, the people here making this for us. And it's, it's exciting. I love it. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to agree with you as well. It's been absolutely amazing. But JT, thank you so much. Seeing what you can do for the rest of the season there, buddy. Get some practice in the Targo Florio, because I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, mate. Right, well, there you go, Edward. Again, we've come to the end of a, another race. And another very interesting evening, I think, a very traditional-esque circuit is in Sebring. Yeah, exactly. And uh, as uh, as JT so rightly pointed out, what a fantastic mod uh, uh, they'd made put together there because it really uh, showed off the very best of this 1964 VWSC sort of championship. And, uh, and we saw up and down the field that lovely uh, fight with the uh, Div, Div Friams with uh, Chen Angelides Di Marzo. Uh, I think that was definitely a big, big highlight, but also the fuel up and down the field. And of course, that close finish in Div 1 and 2 Pro uh, with Cameron Barker beating the two Lotuses of Boerman and uh, Ellie. Or is it Ely? Ely. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I have a last stab at it so you can make fun of me. Uh, I am not, anyway. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm I'm refraining. Even Paul's refrained, and he's normally the first one to pipe up in our era. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. As well. <laughs> yeah, he, he does it quite a lot, mate. You get used to ignoring him by the end of it as well. Right, guys, that's good. That's anyway, going to bring us. Yeah, no worries, mate. It's been a pleasure. No worries at all. Uh, that's going to bring us to the end of this one. Don't forget, guys, on the 23rd of May, we're off for the modern for the 120 minutes of Sebring there. That should be an absolutely amazing one. And then we're back on the 30th. Uh, that, the 30th of March for free laps of Targo Florio. So stay tuned in for that one. But thank you so much to everybody that's joined us. Don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the bells. It's been absolutely amazing having you along. And much love to everybody that's commented in chat. But for now, guys, that's going to bring us to the end of this one. Don't forget, plenty more racing coming up on JBB. We've got no fewer than about six broadcasts going out tomorrow. So if you've got nothing to do on a Sunday and you want to watch great racing, tune in to the JBB YouTube channel as we kick off the morning with some GT3s with the Australian Premier Endurance League. But for now, guys, I've been James Parv. It. I've been alongside Edward Hunter and alongside the man on the cams in the background, Mr. Paul Glover. But for now, guys, up from all of us up here at the JPB booth, take care, have a great week, and you never know, we might see you on a track sometime. Good night. <laughs>